So Paul, if you remember way back when we were talking about the sun, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out how old it was and even how heavy it was. So how do we figure out, though, how heavy the Milky Way is? How, how heavy is it? We don't have a scale. Well, there are two ways to work this out. Yep. One way is just count the stars. So the idea is if we count all the stars, that's going to be the majority of the mass of the galaxy, and we roughly know how much mass goes into each star. And we yeah, so we can count the O stars, the B stars, we know how much they all weigh from our stellar models. Yep. That will tell us the total mass of all the stars. We've got to add in the mass of any planets. But planets are negligible yeah, in comparison. Right, yeah. I mean, the mass of the sun is 99.99% of the total mass of the solar system. The planets add up to almost nothing in that's comparison. Right. Then we've got gas clouds, and we can actually measure them with radio telescopes. Yep, and, okay. and we can measure they the dust. They add up to mass and the dust, and they, that's, it's more than the planets, but it's nothing like as much as the stars. Yep. So if we add up everything that's in there, mostly the masses in stars, <laughs> and we get about 10 to the 11 solar masses for the Milky Way galaxy. Okay, so that seems big. Yep. So, you know, on average, it's about 10 to 11 stars, maybe a sun's roughly average. Yep. There are more low mass stars, but a few very heavy high mass ones, and maybe it averages out to something plausible like that. Okay. Um, but there's another way to do it, which is to look at the motion of the stars. Okay. Now, imagine a star is orbiting around the outside of the galaxy. Yep. Because it's going in a circle, if there was no gravity, it would just go in a straight line. That's right. It's being warped into a circle, which tells us there must be some mass whose gravity is causing it binding it into a circle. If the, there was no mass, it would just go in a straight line. That's right. Likewise, they're oscillating up and down, and that tells us that as it goes up, there must be gravity pulling it down, sucks it back in, mm -hmm. and then it goes down, and the gravity's pulling it back right. up again. And so what you can actually do is use the laws of gravity to work out how much mass there must be to, to keep, keep those, these things uh, going in their orbits. So because we can measure these stars moving around the galaxy fairly well, yep. and we can measure where they are fairly well. We, we can measure can, their speeds. That's right. So we say, if a star is going in a circle, this radius, the speed, we can work out what's called the centripetal force, how much centripetal force is needed to keep it in that orbit. That's right. And that must be supplied by the gravity. Exactly. And so we can weigh the galaxy. So this is not doing anything with counting stars, just simply looking at different stars and how they move around the galaxy. It's like the consequences. Yep. Someone is saying, yeah, I've got hey, how many stars, that's how much it weighs. The other saying is, here's how much mass must be there to make things behave the way they're behaving. Otherwise the galaxy flies apart. Yep. And the trouble is, these two things do not give the same answer. So now how close? Because you said when we were counting the mass of stars, we kind of didn't really care about the planets and the dust and the gas because it's so small. Well, it's not 1% different. It's like 5 to 10 times different. Okay, so that's a lot. So we're not talking about something that is a small component that we're missing. We're talking about something that's a big component that we're missing. Which is just as well because we couldn't actually count the stars that accurately because yeah. most of them are these pathetic little brown dwarfs that are very hard to see. So it wouldn't be surprised if you were out by 20 or 30% in the mass of the stars. Yeah. But factor of 5 or 10... That's pretty big. Yeah. So the galaxy actually weighs about 10 times more than we everything we can see in it. Okay, so if we add up everything that we know, it's still 10 times bigger than everything we know. So every, the gravity we need to keep things in the outskirts of our galaxy in their orbit is 10 times more than the weight of everything we know in the galaxy. Right. So this... Now, can we look at other galaxies to solve this problem? Does it help us at all? It's exactly the same in other galaxies. Okay. Other galaxies are also spinning too fast. Okay. And so once again, we can count the stars. We can work out the, from the orbits how much mass must be. And it seems it's the case for all galaxies. Every galaxy that's ever been observed weighs 5, 10, 20 times more than all the stars we can see in it. So there's something fundamental in galaxies that we're just not seeing or, or we're just missing. Yes. Now, this is called dark matter. Um, it's dark because we don't know what there is, we can't see it, and it's matter because it weighs a lot. <laughs> so and there's something heavy that weighs a lot. That we can't see. Yes. Hence uh, dark matter. Yeah, dark is generally astronomy shorthand for we're completely baffled. <laughs> they give it a, a sexy sounding name. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for the grant applications. Yeah, so now we talk much more about dark matter in other courses in this series. Yes. Uh, but so this is just going to be a brief top and tail of the, the key points. Yep. So we need there to be something which weighs a lot, yep. 
which is in our galaxy. That's right. And which is, um, we can't see. And, and when we say we can't see, this isn't just with their eyes. This isn't just blocked with dust. Radio, X-ray, infrared, any telescope we have doesn't see it. Yep. Now we can kind of map where it is okay. by looking at different stars, stars orbiting close in, stars orbiting further out, gas clouds orbiting even further out, stars in the halo and their orbits. And each of these things tells us how much mass is further in than it. Oh, okay, okay. And again, more details elsewhere yeah. in this course. But by looking at a whole bunch of different radii, we can work out where it is. Yep. And it turns out it's a bit like this green pattern here. It's actually rather like the halo of the galaxy. Yeah, I was going to say, it kind of reminds me of that halo we were talking about earlier. Yeah, so it's actually bigger than the disk of the galaxy. Yep. The peak of the dark matter is actually in the middle of our galaxy, okay. but it's more spread out. Yep. So if you add up, most of the mass is actually further out than the stars. Because it's dramatically far out from the center of the galaxy, this, this halo yeah. of dark matter. I mean, it's peaked in the middle, but as you go away, it it's, falls off yeah. gently, whereas the stars fall off rapidly. Yep. So uh, it's all over this. There is almost certainly dark matter around us right yep. here. So what could it be? I mean, what, what would you imagine? What could be dark and very heavy and spread all over the place? Well, what about... I mean, we, we talked a lot about how stars blow up, they create neutron stars, they create black holes, things like that. What if there's massive objects in space that for some reason don't emit any light, electromagnetic radiation, but they exist. They're heavy, so they would have mass, they create a lot of gravity, and if there's a lot of them, maybe? So this was for a long time one of the most popular theories. They were called machos, which stands for massive compact halo object. And the basic idea is it's something dark and lumpy in the halo of our galaxy. And one possibility might have been that maybe right very early on in our galaxy it formed a huge number of stars, all of which went supernovae and produced yeah. black holes. And so in fact, 90% of our galaxy is actually a huge swarm of black cool. holes. Or it could be in the very early universe, the Big Bang produced primordial black holes That's in right. huge numbers and they're now swarming around. Or it could be the other end. It could be that, in fact, for every low-mass star we see, there are like a million very low-mass stars, mm. these, these uh, brown dwarfs. And so maybe there's just, whatever it is, there's a lot of, a lot of heavy, small things. And look, we, you said there's hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy. That's not crazy to think that, right? It could even be there's actually vast numbers of planets. So the planets in our own yep. solar system add up to less than your one in a thousand of the mass. So you'd need many thousands more planets, and they can't be in solar systems. They must be just wandering around the galaxy, cold and forlorn. Yep. But possibly if you have vast numbers of free-floating planets, that could do it. Okay. So people did a survey for these things. You can't see them by definition. Yep. If there were too many of them, they'd stop blocking our view of distant galaxies. Okay. I remember in my undergraduate final exam, they asked, if the dark matter in the galaxy was in the form of old exam papers, what would the consequences be? <laughs> and it turned out that was not possible because they would, uh, I did the calculation, there'd be so many exam papers, you wouldn't be able to see any distant galaxies, you'd be just blocked by exam papers. Nice. So there's got to be big lumpy things so that you can let the light pass yep. them. Uh, but it turns out that if it were these vast numbers of lumpy things, you wouldn't see them directly. But every now and then they would go in front of one of the stars in a nearby yes. galaxy, the Magellanic Clouds, we'll talk about in a moment. And their gravity will bend the light and actually make the star get brighter and fainter. Yep. It only happens once in every million years for each star. But if you look at a million stars, you should see one a year. That's right. And if you multiply all of these numbers more and more, you be, should be able to see quite a few of them. And we know this technique works, right? It's because they use a similar technique to actually find planets around other stars. That's right. Um, see exoplanets, of course. Uh, and this project was done, the MACHO project, um, here at Mount Stromlo Observatory. And they did not find the lensing events. They found other lensing things <laughs> due to binary stars and other things like that. But they did not find anything like enough of these events to explain the dark matter. So whatever it is, we know it's not in the form of black holes or free-floating planets. So it's still a problem. There's still a lot of missing mass in our galaxy, or, or all galaxies, but it is not big, clumpy, heavy things. So most likely it's some form of weirdo subatomic particle. Okay. So this is something very small but has a lot of mass as well? That's right. Now we know that neutrinos, for example, um, we talked about them when talking about the yes. sun, um, and they have mass. Yep. They actually can't explain this because we'd have seen it if it was neutrinos, we've got neutrino detectors. But something maybe a bit more massive than a neutrino and a little harder to detect yep. in vast, vast numbers. Remember, this is 
80, 90 percent of everything in the Milky Way. All those stars, that's kind of irrelevant. The, the Milky Way is mostly dark matter. Yeah. The stars are just the icing on the cake. <laughs> so essentially, the galaxy is mostly made up of dark matter. That's the flower of the cake. And the stars are just little chocolate chips on top. That's right. Um, and so most likely there are some weirdo particles and they're probably flying through our bodies right now as we stand here and oh. your body as you watch this. Okay. Uh, and because they're very slippery, they go right through you. You don't even notice these things. And they don't really interact with things that well because as you said, otherwise we would have detected them. If they had electrical charge, we'd be able to see them. Yep. If they interacted via the strong nuclear interaction, they would cause nuclear reactions all over the place. They either don't interact at all with any interaction apart from gravity or just a weak interaction. Okay. Which, and very weakly at that. Okay. And they're in basements and mine shafts all around the world. Right. There are experiments trying to find these things, and so far they've found a big fat zip. Every few years there's a, oh, I think we found it, and then it goes away again. Unfortunately, yes. So at the moment, we don't know what it is. It's probably a weirdo subatomic particle. They're probably flying through our bodies as we sit here. There's an awful lot of them, but we don't know what they are. But we do know it makes up most of the mass of the galaxy. Yes.